Hi, everybody. This is Josh Becerra from McGurian. This is episode 14 of Augers on the Town. I'm here with Teresa Thomas. Hi, Teresa. Hi. Thanks for being here. So let me give you a little bit of background on Teresa. So she's the founder of Win Win Connects. Uh, she connects people, possibilities, and purpose. As an award-winning connector, presenter, networking expert, and author of two books, Win Win Networking and 50 Fun Things, Enjoy the Small Things. You were also named 2019 Women in Business Champion through the Small Business Association of Minnesota and a 2019 50 Over 50 Exemplary Leader by AARP and Pollen. The last thing I'll say is Teresa believes networking is really about seeing the interconnectedness between all of us. It's about listening and noticing the ways we can lift each other up. I am super excited to be talking to you today. And I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's good to reconnect with you, Josh. I know. Uh, I think when we were prepping for this, we were realizing 10 years ago, we met at an event and then like we connected on LinkedIn and a few other things, but really haven't done a ton of networking together since then. But that's kind of the power of networking, right? That's absolutely the power of networking. Like our lives, our careers, our businesses change, but our network is is there for us and we yep. can reconnect. And, and like sometimes people get embarrassed, like, oh, I haven't talked to this person for 10 years or whatever. But everybody wants to know that they were re remembered and recognized. And so yeah. I say, let let that go. We're not in high school and have to act cool. Like, oh yeah, I don't remember who you are anymore. Like, right. hey, I, I remember you. Like, even if you don't remember me, you made a good yeah. impression on me. And I, of course that's going to feel great. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it was good that's reconnecting cool. with you. Well, in, in 10 years, you know, you, you get a little more gray in my case and uh, you know, grow out the, the COVID beard. So uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm not as recognizable as I, as I used to be, but, but thanks for being here. So Speaking of COVID beards and change and crazy stuff, um, let's talk about COVID and networking. So, um, you know, I love networking. I love going to events and meeting people and getting to know people. Um, haven't been able to do much of that recently with COVID. And it's really changed kind of the way of we're working and the way we're networking. Um, so, for you, thinking about COVID and networking, like what are some of the positive impacts you're seeing in the networking space due to COVID? I'm seeing a lot of positive impacts and I've also challenged some of my own assumptions. So for example, I everything I used to do is all in-person. And so I had this sense that in-person networking was better and more effective than online networking. And online networking was this thing you did to support your in-person networking. Right. And I've had a paradigm shift in how I've seen that. And now I see them as both very, very valuable and they can integrate and they can also be on their own. So like there are people like, like you, I'm sure too, that you've never actually met, but you've networked online. Yeah. I have a really great synergy and connection with them. And so it's uh, a, another positive thing. Speaking of that is I'm now able to connect with people anywhere. So if I do an sure. online event, we can have people anywhere connecting and that feels really, really powerful. Um, yeah. So, and, but we're all learning, like we're all shifting to this new way of networking. And now we are thinking about reintegrating. And so I was like, okay, what's that going to look like? Yeah. And yeah, well, let's talk about that. So I'm yeah. sure that there are those who might be feeling a little nervous about like re-entry into this mm -hmm. uh, a newer, different looking normal. So do you have any kind of tips for people that might be feeling nervous about re-entry? Yeah, well, I think everybody is going to feel a little nervous because yeah. it's been a while, so you are not alone. And even yeah. pre-COVID, whenever I do workshops, even people that were super extroverted, you know, would come to me and say that they had some like there's certain things about networking that made them nervous. So to just realize you're not you're not alone in that nervousness. And one of the really good things that we can carry forward with us when we reconnect is I feel like in the past year, COVID has uh, forced us to really look internally and I'm like, yeah. what are we doing? Everything's right. changing. 
and we've become way more intentional. So that benefits us with our networking because we used to just go along and do things because it was just what we do. Like we'd go to an event, we'd go be part of a certain group because they were part of our routine. Our routines have been completely shifted. So now we're thinking, okay, who do I miss? Who do I wish I had in my circle? And how do I want to connect? And how am I going to go about that? And and what is the purpose behind it? And and how how do I want that to look and feel? So it's no longer just mindlessly like going to coffee meetings. And it's sure. we're I think we're being a lot more thoughtful now. And yeah, uh, I think that's true. yeah, yeah. I mean, I find I I think you're absolutely right, and it's super smart because before you just kind of hey, I have these series of groups or events that I go to on a monthly basis. And now we have this kind of pause to say, do I want to re-engage with that group? What was the real value I was getting yeah. from that? And we can be a little bit more intentional with our, our time and who we're really trying to connect with. I think that's super smart. Yeah. And we have, we've also like realized the value of our time, <laughs> you know, like, so um, yeah, I, yeah, I feel like once we reconnect, it might be a little crazy for a while. So one thing I will say is, you, you, you're an extrovert. I'm an ambivert. And for people who haven't heard that term before, it's somebody yeah. who's got qualities on both sides and that's pretty much in the middle. So okay. the introverted side of me liked that. I was like, oh, I get to like do this one-on-one, you know, with online networking. And, um, but I miss the, the extrovert side misses that, you know, human connection in, in the yeah, same yeah, room. Yeah. But I'll say that, um, wherever you are on that introvert extrovert spectrum to just be aware of it and kind of notice yourself for how you reconnect. So I have heard from some of my friends who are more introverted, just like, you know, there are a lot of the things I liked about, you know, being locked in um, and I really want to reconnect, but they, there's some social anxiety because it's been a while, like, okay, got to build that tool up, get that practice again. Um, yeah. giving yourself grace and then for the extroverts I have a feeling the extroverts are going to be so excited to reconnect that they might bowl some people over so if you're it's like super extroverted just like okay I'm going to also listen I'm going to observe um, and uh, and you know people will probably be really cautious like if you're a hugger maybe like you know People might not be ready for that for a while. Sure. So, so we'll just, I think we'll have more of a self-awareness and kind of a noticing like, okay, how am I feeling? And I'm not alone in this. And and I do want to reconnect, but that more of a mindfulness and yeah. how we reconnect. I really like that. So, you know, we kind of jumped right into this idea of re-entry, but I do want to touch or spend a little bit of time on like the online networking mm-hmm. that's now been developed do you have any like tips or etiquette that you feel people should really be paying attention to when doing like the online networking side of things yeah i mean a lot of the in-person networking etiquette applies to online so you know to be responsive to not um like be like push your sales like like you're still building a relationship even though you might not be seeing the person they're still a human being. And so you want that to be reciprocal and uh, good salespeople know that they, they want to understand their client or their customer or their potential referral. So, um, so just, yeah, stepping back and um, not blasting your stuff, you know, like it's like a mix, like it's a conversation and Hey, I want you to know about this or hear this link but it's, it's a balance um, because I know because pre-COVID before I really wrapped my mind around online networking, um, I probably was guilty of not having as much of a balance, you know, like okay. being a resource, um, you know, sharing, sharing helpful information. I think when I was online before, it was more like, oh, you need to know about this thing. You need to know about this thing. And like, which we've heard is like entering a party and like, Hey, everybody, you guys know about me. (laughs) Oh, you know, I'm not going to listen to anything you say, but you know, Hey, nice to meet you. Gotta go. (laughs) And so, um, yeah, so that, that would be one of the etiquette things that I would share. Cool. 
Yeah, I definitely can re uh, relate to like this I, in person, like person to person networking. Mm -hmm. I definitely had a phase in my career where I was really like profit focused. Like I was just, I'm in this room. I want to find the people I need to talk to who I think could possibly turn into business. Like that was my mindset. Now, I know that that's kind of why networking maybe has like a bad rap, right? And I know that you and your win-win networking guidebook, which is now in its mm -hmm. second edition, is kind of working to change change that. So why don't you talk a little bit about like that, the mindset or the approach that you recommend around yeah. networking, like this difference between like profit focused and maybe, a, you know, like a different type of focus. Well, first of all, I do want to say that that that's good that you're they're profit focused um and i will also say that i've been guilty about being too much the opposite like oh i don't want to bother them and like try to make a sale like okay with well, that right. i'm trying to grow a business so there's a balance and again it comes to that that relationship building um but uh yeah i would i would say um for myself to or for anybody is to know what your goal is for your networking and then yeah. look for that balance and be open to other possibilities. So you said in the beginning, you were very, you know, profit driven, let's make a sale, let's get a client, but you probably ended up finding that you made some great connections that referred you to someone else or that you learned from, or that helped you stay in tune with the market and what they needed. Um, so it's have that openness to other things that are possible. And so sometimes when people go in like purely with like such a solid goal of you know making a sale, they miss out on some things that might even be better yeah. than, what, than, than what they originally imagined. You know, like maybe there's like a funder or like someone who wants to, you know, like, like oh, wow, I, I killed it because I, I pushed too hard you end up going into a room and you're like i just collected four business cards yay good for me and now i can leave but because you were so focused kind of on that objective you may have missed the person who was in the room that could have been like completely transformational for your business mm -hmm. and so i think that's kind of what you were talking about is you know, instead of be, having such a singular focus being a little bit more open to what might be able to happen. Yeah, and, and we can all probably recall a time where we met somebody and we were interested in something that they did, but they weren't hearing what we were trying to say because they were so focused that they needed to say this certain thing that yeah. it, it can kill it. Like it can kill that that vibe. Like, okay, you know, I thought I'd wanna do business with you, but you're not hearing what I'm saying or you're not listening to what what I do and seeing the connection. So, right. yeah, so that, that's, that's part of it as, as well. Um, and that's what gives networking a bad rap because if everybody is going to network and most people not, most people do have, you know, an idea that I'm building my business. I'm going to, you know, get a job. I'm going to make a sale. Like they have that, but there needs to be more to it because not everybody in that room is going to be buying from each other. It's, Right. remembering that the, the connections that we have outside of it developing that relationship seeing where it goes in the long run is going to be exponential um to yeah to to, to being too singularly focused yeah however sometimes people like like they land something really big in one 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 meeting but that's that's the exception that doesn't that doesn't happen that often yeah so one of the things that i'm curious about you know uh, I've heard that like having a script or like memorizing kind of an elevator pitch is, is a good thing. But at the same time, I've been in rooms where I just feel like, man, that per that person just got done talking with whomever and they came over here to talk to me and I'm hearing them say they kind of, the it's like, so where are you on kind of that, uh, those, uh, that idea of like, yeah script or elevator pitches like how important is that um it's good to know what you want to say but i will say that everything i do with networking is helping people figure out what works for them 
Mm -hmm. their specific goals, their personality. So I don't come across well in a script. Like I, I need to know my bullet point points. I need to be authentic in the moment, responsive, um, improvisational almost. Right. And that's what works for me because it fits my personality. It fits what people would expect of me. They want, uh, because I do network, they know that I should be a good listener so that's part of it um yep. other people are really good with their scripts and it yeah. fits them and it fits their personality and think about like someone who's a plumber they they can get right to the point they can get right to the point and say what they do and it's not going to change so right. for me my goals are always changing when i'm networking but a plumber is like nope i just need you to know and they might come across in a way that's super memorable and it's scripted and it fits for them. And, and you might be in a, the same group with them and hear the same thing over and over, but it's charming for them and it helps you remember and tell other people. So it's really like, what fits you? What gives you results? Yeah. If you feel like you, you try to do the canned one kind of introduction and it's not working for you, it's gonna come across and other people will feel awkward. Yeah. So, that's what yeah. happens to me. Like it just, I, I, I start thinking, wait, I didn't, I didn't say that one word. And now do I repeat? Like, ah, oh, I get all flustered. I just yeah. like being, I like being authentic and kind of unscripted. So I yeah. found what works for me, but I do like this idea of like, just be, do what comes most naturally. Yes. To you. That's get probably your point across. And yeah. how it fit you. And I, I actually just thought of an example. This is probably when it really sunk in. And it's like 30 years ago, and I was working for a um, higher education program. And I needed to go in and talk about the programs we did to college students. College students are the most difficult audience to get interested in what you're saying. Yeah. And I would watch the professors give these presentations about the program. And they would talk about, you know, the theory and the, you know, and, and so, and because they were professors, the students related to them, like, oh, you're a professor, you would talk like that. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I have to go in the room and talk like that. Be professorial. Like, yeah, be professorial. And I felt like just such a fraud, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> they're going to find out that I don't actually talk like this. And so when I would try to do it that way, it bombed. And then I yeah. finally realized, well, it didn't totally bomb, but like, I, I didn't like how it felt and I didn't get a lot of results. But once I realized it, all that matters is I share the key points, but I yeah. share it with my personality in a way that works for me. And then all of a sudden the registrations from our program were off the charts because there was this relatability factor. They could tell that I really cared. I wasn't just saying a script, you know, to yeah. get some students to sign up for something. Uh, so so that, that's probably the first time I really learned that value of making those connections and introducing yourself and your top talking points in a way that fits. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, Agurian is a digital marketing agency, right? Uh, so I'm in the business of marketing. You're really focused on networking. So I'm curious, like, where you, where do you see the intersections of those two? Are, are they like completely separate? Um, I think they're definitely intersected. I would love to hear what you think as well. But, you know, in marketing, you're trying to create an awareness for your product, your service, you're, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to make that, that sale, create that connection. And in networking, you're building the relationship and the trust so that people want to follow through and take that next step, especially yeah. in our digital society now where people are looking for, you know, that proof. What are your, you know, what, what is your five, you know, do you have a five-star rating? What are, you know, do you have recommendations or testimonials? Right, reviews or and stuff, yeah. Reviews. And so it, I feel like they, there's an intersection and an overlap and that you want to be mindful of both. Um, yeah. But, but I'd be as, as, as a digital marketer, what is your perception? Well, so I, what I can reflect on is like at Agurian, we have this tagline. It's like have confidence in your digital marketing investments. Right. And so mm -hmm. um, 
there with that like marketing message there there comes a little bit of i, I don't want to i don't know if it's called bravado or you know there's just a little bit of an edge to it you know confidence mm -hmm. is a is a tricky thing um because you don't want to come off as like someone who's a know-it-all or something right but at the same time you want to be clearly an expert and so mm -hmm. i do think like when I think about myself going out into networking situations, I, I like try to channel some of that marketing mm -hmm. message, right? I, I yeah. want people to see me as an expert, but not as a know-it-all, mm -hmm. be accessible, but, you know, higher level thinker. Um, so I do see where like, uh, like core marketing messages and like ethos of marketing the networkers can bring that to bear. And then, and, and, and now you're like representing the brand. Like you have your personal brand, of course, mm -hmm. that you're representing, but then you're also like representing the brand or the company that you work for. So I definitely see those intersections in my work um, today for sure. Yeah. And then you also brought in that intersection of the brand and how it all relates. So you want to show up with that sense of consistency. So mm -hmm. And, and when you said the word confidence, absolutely. So I work with a lot of, of women in business and I'm like, and some, or, or men as we like, oh, I don't wanna you know, have too much bravado or whatever. Yeah. But um, we do wanna come across as confident and believing in our brand. And hopefully, hopefully really, we really do. Um, right. Because that's who we wanna do business with. If somebody's like, oh yeah, I, you know, I really care about my business. Um, it's, it's okay. You know, like, you're not, you're not going to hire. Think we do, that I person. think we do decent work. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. I can't remember what uh, marketing messages out there that like good isn't good enough or something. Right. It's just like, yeah, you need more than just good enough. Yeah. And you want like that impression makes such a difference. Like I still remember somebody I met about 10 years ago. And I feel, I feel bad, but um, I had seen her written up for her work. I won't say what she does. And I met her at a networking and I recognized her name. I'm like, oh, I heard that, you know, you won this award from this publication. And she's like, oh, I, wow, I didn't think you would know me. Usually people don't know me. And, and it just killed it. Like, like yeah, you I, wanted I'm to like telling you, like you won her. an award, like, you got like what is it reader's choice or something like that like yeah. that's a big deal step right. into it and yeah. um and i think she wants she you know she felt uncomfortable with it but um but yeah when we're in networking um and in our marketing we want to show up and 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 representing our brand at its best yeah um for sure i just i just thought of a story from a, a couple of days ago if that kind of relates you yeah go it? for it okay yeah. so I had an online event a couple of days ago and uh, there's somebody who normally like is super confident and, you know, just shines expert in what he does. And he ended up not coming to the, the event and mm. he followed up and he said, and I thought he was just, he was so, so self-aware. He said, I had a rotten day. I had something awful happen with a client. And I knew I wouldn't show up at my best. Yeah. And, and he did so many things, right. He knew himself well enough to know that he wasn't going to represent his brand and himself in the way he wanted to. He knew yeah. it was going to be a disservice for the people he'd connect with. And then the other really good thing he did that some people overlook in their networking is realizing that the organizer is part of the network too. Right. And to have that connection with me, and follow up built his reputation versus yeah. diminishing it from. because yeah. he told me what was going on and it made me care about him and his business more and think like this this guy's got integrity and right. so anyway that's just uh, um this is a little example of kind of like being self-aware of how you're showing up and you know sometimes we don't have great days like there are days where i'm like okay feeling low energy, do some jumping jacks or whatever, listen to some music that gets me in the right mood and just to, you know, power through it. And yeah. once I do that, something switches and all of a sudden I am actually in a good mood. So yeah, yeah. use some tricks too. That's cool. So that's kind of a segue. The last topic I wanted to touch on in this 
talk with you was the your latest book right enjoy the small yeah. thing um so you've got like workbooks and journals and charts uh, around 50 fun things um what I, I think this is a good segue, right? Like yeah. what made you want to develop that program or, and write that book? Yeah. So, yeah. So the book developed after the program. Uh, so the okay. program was about like imagining 50 fun things, little and big that you want to invite into your life and what connections you want to invite to be part of that. Yep. And it creates huge self-awareness and clarity and connection. It's a resiliency tool. It like helps um, give people something hopeful to look forward to in this past year for myself. I know this, like, it's what kept me going. Like I got to just find some small things that, right. that are keeping me going. And then, so the, um, I'll just show it. It's a, this 50 fun things, enjoy the small things. This book was in response to people saying, okay, so you help us come up with our own 50 fun things that, you know, for themselves, but what are some like what are 50 fun little things you can do to just quick turn your day around? So it's yeah. filled with like little simple things you can do to just turn your day around with action steps and reflections. And, um, and it came out last January, right before everything hit. Sure. And I hadn't, I was so grateful to it. Cause I, I use my own tools. Like I, that's how I, I developed the tools for myself and other right. people are finding value. So, um, but yeah, it's about finding that joy and connection. And that there's, a, there's even a presentation I give on the joy of connecting. And I walk people through, if you shift uh, some of the conversation starters you use with people, mm -hmm. your connections can be really quick and powerful and, and have that level of care by yeah. focusing on what lights you up and getting the other person to share what lights them up. That there's something about sharing joy that, that connects us. As humans. Yeah. yeah, no, that's awesome. So um, I want you to like sign off with a piece of advice. So in okay. my world, right, marketers, we uh, a lot of and in the agency world in general, right, you're managing a lot of different accounts, you've got a lot of work. And I think, you know, especially in the last year, uh, feeling somewhat isolated. So there's just a lot of pressure and stress. And I think it's been compounded probably with COVID. So do you have a piece of advice for marketers? And if so, what would it be for people feeling that pressure and stress? Yeah, I think my advice is, is, is not only for marketers, it's for, for everybody, but when we're feeling that stress to look for what's going right. Yeah. And if things feel like they're really not going right, then a simple question you can ask yourself is like, okay, how can I make this more fun? <laughs> like, there's got to be a way. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and then here's another playful thing that I that I do is sometimes if someone's like, no, this is just not fun at all. I, yeah. This sounds so silly, but I just like tell myself, I'm just this little robot. I just need to do my stuff. <laughs> and then when I'm done, I can, you know, experience something better, or good or reward myself. So um, we, we kind of need to... Uh, yeah, attend to that side of ourselves. It's not just like, you know, in the grind, you know, work, 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 but like, okay, what's going right? Yeah. Is there a way to like focus on those things and what, uh, and what could make it more fun? Yeah. Um, and maybe it's even like thinking about like, okay, what do I appreciate about what this job or this is bringing to me? Like how it supports me or my family or the, the connections that I have that I appreciate that maybe aren't going super great right in this moment, but in, in general are valuable. So it's, I think it's, it's kind of a philosophical way of looking at it, but. No, I, I think that's great. And I, I definitely kind of will say, okay, this is a task I just need to get done. I can't, I may not be able to find the fun in it, yeah. and I'm going to work on this until this point, And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to go. Yeah make myself a really nice cup of coffee and yeah. like, look, look out the window for five minutes or whatever. Yeah. Right. And it can, yeah, it can just be little like that, but yeah. because, but what we do is we like, we go, 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 go. And we don't refuel. Yeah. And then, and then we're not good to anybody, you know, like. Most importantly, not to ourselves. Right. No, yeah. exactly. And we're, yeah, when we're not good to ourselves, 
it, it affects those around us. So yeah, we need to take care of ourselves. Cool. Well, let's end on that note. That, right. This has been awesome. Episode 14 of Augers on the Town with Teresa Thomas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff.